Oh, jeez, Rick. Rick, why'd you get me out of bed, Rick? Oh, Morty. Morty, come on, we, we got it. I, I got an adventure for you. Oh, jeez, Rick. Rick, can we just stay home tonight? Ah, no, come on, Morty. Morty, we're... We, <coughs> we, we gotta get, we gotta get in. Come on. Come on, it, it'll be a fun adventure. Oh, come on, Rick, I, I have a math test tomorrow. Morty, come, just, come on. It, it, math is for suckers, come on. Uh, get out of bed. No, Rick, I, I don't wanna. Rick, I... Uh, Morty, Morty, come on. C I'm gonna drag you out of bed. No, Rick, Rick, I... Rick. That didn't sound wrong in any way whatsoever. <laughs> By that opening, you could probably guess what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, a few months ago, I discovered a new show, even though it wasn't new. It's been around for a while, it's been around since 2013, but I um, recently just started watching it. I didn't just discover it, I, dis I discovered it about two years ago, but I never really got a chance to watch it. The show is called Rick and Morty. It's an animated sci-fi show that is shown on Adult Swim, usually around 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock on weekends. I don't exactly know when it's played during the week, because I only watch it on weekends, but it is definitely probably one of the best shows that I've ever seen as of this moment. <coughs> the show is about a family called the Smiths. Obviously the most cliched last name ever, because I don't know any characters in television history with that last name. The show mostly focuses on the young boy in the family, Morty Smith, and his crazy adventures with his scientist grandfather, Rick. They go on these crazy adventures through different dimensions. Rick builds all these contraptions and inventions that Morty uses, and eventually they need to save the day in the end, either by an alien invasion or something that went wrong in a certain dimension, and it's just a whole bunch of shenanigans that go on and it's absolutely hilarious. Now, just by the title, Rick and Morty, and also by looking at this picture of the characters, Rick and Morty, it's kind of no secret that the whole show is based off of Marty and Doc from the Back to the Future franchise. And that literally is not a secret because that is where it is based off of. If you look this up, it'll clearly say Rick and Morty is based off of Doc and Marty from Back to the Future. In fact, the creators of the show, Dan Harmon and Justin Rowland, made a little animation and put it online parodying the adventures of Doc and Marty, but just called them Rick and Morty. I actually could have that wrong. I saw that animation a while ago. I haven't seen it since. Oh, well, it's always good to look it up now. The Adventures of Doc and Marty. Yep, it's right there. Doc and Marty Lost episode. That's, uh, that's, that's the one that, uh, the creators of the show made. Speaking of the creators of the show, the name Justin Roiland might sound a bit familiar to you because he has voiced a lot of characters in the past. He not only voices both Rick and Morty in Rick and Morty, but he has also provided voices for Lemon Grab on Adventure Time, Oscar in Fish Hooks, the Time Traveler in... Gravity Falls, whose name I can't remember for some reason. I think his name was Gilbin. So I've been into Rick and Morty since Christmas. And, like I said, it's probably one of the best shows that I've seen so far. It's definitely funny. The way that situations are put down, the comedy, the writing, the way the characters are written, everything is just awesome. I love it. The episodes also have interesting titles, as the titles are basically references to movies that were made. For example, the Christmas episode, Anatomy Park, is obviously a parody of Jurassic Park. Some titles are actually very easy to detect. But the episodes itself are extremely hilarious, and I laugh at every single one of them. Season 1 has a, a lot of funny episodes. This is the, the pilot. Obviously, um, the first episode's called The Pilot, so there's not really a specific title name for it. 
Uh, that just <laughs> kind of just introduces every character. Uh, Lawnmower Dog. Uh, that's the episode where Morty's dog isn't acting very well, so Rick fixes everything by putting a collar on him, and eventually, like, the dog gets a super intelligence, creates an army of robotic dogs, <laughs> and they slowly start taking over the world. As that's going on, though, Rick and Morty are dealing with a, 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 an issue in uh, Morty's teacher's dream <laughs> because they want to get Morty a good grade on a, a little essay he wrote. So they go into his dream, but then they go into someone else's dream, and eventually they <laughs> meet like a, a nightmarish character <laughs> inside someone else's dream. <laughs> then you got the, the Christmas episode, like I said, Anatomy Park, which by the title, it doesn't really sound like Christmas, but it, it's, it's a Christmas episode. There is Christmas in it, Jerry, who's the dad, tries to get everybody to be, like, happy and stuff because his parents are coming for the holidays, and his, his parents get into, like, this situation. The mother starts cheating on her husband, but the husband knows that she's cheating on him. That's the Christmas part of it. What also goes on is that in a, in a, a very hoboish kind of guy, there's a, an amusement park, and the guy is slowly dying in the amusement park's the amusement park has an issue, so Rick sends Morty to go inside, <laughs> and it's it's a big mess. Uh, there's Me Seeks and Destroy, which is episode five. That's a pretty funny one. Uh, there's this alien c called Mr. Meek Seeks, and he's basically gonna help everyone. And once he helps somebody, he explodes and dies. His purpose is to die, <laughs> but uh, Jerry is given a Me Seeks so he can get better in golf, but he doesn't get better. So the Me Seeks gets another Me Seeks to help, but nothing's working, and there are like a thousand different Me Seeks, and none of them are dying. They're not meant to stay alive for so long. <laughs> they basically riot, because all they want to do is die, and Jerry won't let them die. <laughs> Rick Potion 9 was a pretty dark one. That was, that, that was episode 6. That was pretty dark, because that changed the whole dynamic of the show in its sixth episode. Uh, they cre Rick gives Morty a, a love potion to give the girl that Morty likes uh, so he could dance with her and she won't get like weirded out or anything and she has the flu and it causes a mutation in everyone's system transforms them into bugs and then tr transform them into like these mutants and because they don't know what to do Rick and Morty flee their dimension and go to a different one where they explode and die and they bury their bodies, and now live in that universe where they die. That's the universe they live in today. That's pretty scary. <laughs> and then you got season two, which is where I mostly just started watching all the episodes, like, A Rickle in Time, which is an episode that the creators kind of showed the audience of the show, uh, proving that they're never going to do time travel, because the show was based off of Doc and Marty, and they do time travel stuff, but in Rick and Morty, it's more dimension travel. And everyone was like, you know, you, you gotta do time travel. So they tried to show what would happen if they did time travel. That could get very complicated. And the whole episode was basically just split in, like, halves and then four quarters and eighths. And there were a lot of different animation screens. And they said it was hell going through the animation process of this episode. But it was damn right funny. Total Rick Call, probably one of my favorite episodes. That's where uh, an alien life form has embedded itself inside the household of the Smiths, and they basically have the ability to embed them in their minds and be like people that they know but they don't. It's very complicated because you'd have to see the episode to understand, but basically a whole bunch of different aliens try to convince the Smith family that they've known each other for a very long time so this way they can invade their Earth. It's, it, it's very funny. I'm a Mr. Poopy Butthole. <laughs> ah, jeez, ah, Rick, I'm Mr. Poopy Butthole. Oh, wee. <laughs> Get Swifty, that's where a whole bunch of heads just come to Earth and take Earth to put them on a, a somewhat of an American Idol show. But a whole new religion just starts in the town. Here's a good one. The Ricks Must Be Crazy. Uh, that's an episode where Rick's ship uh, runs out of energy and fuel but it's being run by a different dimension, and it turns out that dimension has come up with a new way of getting energy, and that's by doing exactly what Rick's... And that's exactly by doing what they did, 
And it's basically just like an infinite loop of exactly what Rick did is what's happening in all these other universes. And it's pretty funny when you see the last universe realize that they're just like a small speck and none of their lives matter. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Big Trouble in Little Sanchez. That's where Rick becomes a teenager to kill a vampire in the school, but ends up liking being a teenager. Uh, <laughs> it's got a funny ending. Look Who's Purging Now, basically a parody of The Purge. Uh, the Wedding Squanchers. What is that? Squanchers? That's the season finale. That That's a bit jaw-dropping. It's got a big cliffhanger that I'd like to know what happens. Uh, and we're going to find out later. Like, whenever the season decides to come out, we're going to find out finally. Which is cool. That's just a little bit. Of, w of what goes on in Rick and Morty. Those are the episodes. I guess I should have said there were going to be spoilers in this. I really like Rick and Morty. I find it a very funny show. Other, other episodes they do is like every eighth episode of the season. Uh, they do an episode where Rick sets up like an alien cable. And they get like shows from different dimensions. That's pretty funny. Uh, seeing a montage of different shows from different dimensions. I got ants in my eyes. That really did happen. That was in an episode. So if you couldn't guess, Rick and Morty is definitely a good one for me. I have nothing to complain about this show. Uh, the way it's animated is pretty good. The way the, the voices are absolutely hysterical. That's what makes it all funny. The situations make it funny. Uh, I, I enjoy the fact that this is one of the cartoons, uh, one of the very few, that actually focuses on continuity. Uh, not many cartoons really do that. I mean, some cartoons do focus on continuity. Uh, Steven Universe is very heavily on continuity, uh, but this is also one of them, and they physically show that continuity is a big important part of Rick and Morty, uh, specifically because uh, in most of the season two episodes there's a big crack in the, uh, the driveway and basically around the house, and that's because in season finale of season one the house was taken away and then put back and there was a big crack left. So that's really, that's all I gotta say about Rick and Morty. I think it should be nominated for a Kids' Choice Awards as Best TV Show or Best Cartoon. I don't think that would happen. But hey, if they got a whole bunch of other inappropriate stuff on Nickelodeon, I mean... Why not? <laughs> Give it a shot and get fired! So that's what I think about Rick and Morty. Uh, I'm excited for Season 3. I wanna know what you guys think now. Have you ever seen Rick and Morty? If so, then what do you think about it? Do you hate it or like it? What's your opinion on it? Also, does Rick and Morty sound like a show that you would be interested in watching? Do you agree or disagree with anything I said in this video? Tell me in the comments and also leave me your suggestions for whatever movie, TV show, or random thing you want me to talk about next. Thanks for watching The Wild Review on The Wild Reviewer and you just saw me review a thing.